Hi everyone, this is Neil from Light Pillar, and welcome to part four of the Mosaic video series. In the next couple of videos, we'll be taking a detailed look at creating the very layouts that you'll use to arrange your windows. So let's first start by taking a look at basic layouts. Basic layouts are the most typically used layouts as they are easy to create and their flexible nature means that any single layout will work on any display regardless of the screen resolution. So this is the Layouts tab in the Preferences. The column down the left displays the list of layouts that you have created and the panel on the right displays the details of the selected layout. So let's start by creating a new layout so we can run through all of the options. So from the plus icon we select New Layout and this gives us a brand new empty layout. So we'll start by giving it a name. And I'm going to add a keyboard shortcut of Alt 1. And the displays option here lets you specify if the layout appears on all of your connected displays or specifically just one of them. It's a useful option when using advanced layouts to create a layout for a specific screen, but I'll cover this in the next video. The next option is the grid resolution. This lets you divide your desktop into smaller rectangles and each layout that you create will be defined by combining one or more of these rectangles together. The higher the resolution, the more granularity you have for making more precise layouts. For most layouts, the 8x8 grid is sufficient to let you create halves, quarters and slices. You can see how your desktop is divided with the preview window in the bottom. If you want to adjust the grid, click on this button and adjust the slider bar. You'll see the grid update in the preview real time. By default, it's set to automatically adjust the Y axis for you. If you want to change this, untick the button and now you can specify a separate Y axis and X axis. So let's go back to the defaults of 8x8 and define a layout. Simply click and drag across the grid squares to define the left half of your screen. Now if you look closely at the layout, you'll see a light grey border. This represents the size of the gutter that has been specified above, in this case 32 pixels. As I demonstrated in the introduction video, you can use the gutter to make your arrangement of windows more visually pleasing by preventing them from touching or their shadows from overlapping adjacent windows. For your convenience, each new layout that you create is automatically set to use the default gutter of 32 pixels. If you wish to change this, you can click in the General tab and set the value just here. In this example, we want to create a custom value, so click on the button and untick the checkbox for use default gutters. If I now start dragging the slider bar, you can see real time results on the layout preview. Let's set it to 40 pixels. The first thing you'll notice is that the internal edge of our layout has a gutter that is half the size of the external edges. This is really useful as it prevents a double width gutter between adjacent window edges. However, if you untick the checkbox, you can customize to suit your own needs. Finally, you can switch between pixels and percentages. Percentages allow you to keep the size of the gutter proportional to your screen resolution, which is useful if you switch between different displays regularly. So now let's complete this layout and quickly create a new one. Right, 50%, shortcut of Alt 2, have a custom gutter of 40 pixels to match the one that we created for the left, 50%, and drag over the right hand side. Now what we need to do is add these to a group. So layout groups very quickly define which layouts appear in which group for different workflow purposes. So here we're going to make sure we've got common selected and we'll tick the two layouts we've just created. 
Now when we drag our window, you'll see that our two new layouts, left 50 and right 50, correctly show in the layout view. So that concludes my demonstration of basic layouts. Next we'll get into the even more powerful area of advanced layouts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.